Previously, we completed the entire foundation for our A-frame edition build. It's going so much better today than it has in the past. Oh! This was the final concrete pour for us and a huge move forward in the build. The forms are coming off. They're very, very heavy. They're bare. Yeah, new babies are being born, older babies get turned out onto pasture, and we take steps forward by tearing apart our past. Ellie and I are heading out to check on one of our pregnant ewes today. She is keeping her distance from the rest of the flock, so I'm pretty sure that we've got a couple of lambs out there in the field. Such a cutie, right? Yes! <laughs> she's nursing. We'll wait until she's yeah. done, okay? Yeah, because uh, we don't know if it's a boy or girl. not scared. She's a brave little girl. I know she is. I hope she's a girl really bad. All right, we'll pick her up and let's find out. Oh, good girl. A good oh, girl. She can stand. Yes, she's got strong legs. Yes. And we have a girl. Yes! <laughs> I love you. I love you. And sure enough, we have two more absolutely adorable little lambs born on the farm. Both of them are strong, healthy, nursing. And by the way, we have had seven lambs born so far, and six of those seven have been ewe lambs. We've only had one ram lamb. It's, hey it's crazy good luck. You're a good mama. Oh, are you licking your babies? You're gonna be the best mama ever. Oh, you're so cute. You are. You're so good. Go to mama. You're okay. You're okay. Go to mama. Yeah. Go to mama. Today we're picking back up where we left off yesterday after being rained out, removing all the concrete forms. It's going so much better today than it has in the past because we didn't put any shale down there to hold it in, make sure no blowouts happen. We use rebar instead. And uh, I want to pat my partner on the back for that one. Aaron, great job. I think Enough, you're the one who yeah, taught me that lesson though. It was, it was a complaint that made me think outside the box. <laughs> <laughs> Don't use shale to reinforce the bottoms of the forms. Use rebar. Uh, I got. I know. That's what I learned. I, I taught you that. <laughs> I know you did. <laughs> the, you taught me that the hard way. <laughs> uh, I know. <laughs> Exhausted. <laughs> <sighs> so what you're saying is that does work. Yes. Yes. A lot of complaining from the wife works. Definitely. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. Oh, I can't really tell you guys just how happy we are to be past this point of concrete. Yes, nice. Granted, we do still have to do the safe from walls and ceiling, Yes. but we're going to wait because like we are so over the concrete and we need a mental break from the concrete. So we're gonna make some progress elsewhere and get like the entire floor built and get the draining put in and the waterproofing and get everything backfilled. And then I think that our spirits are going to be re-energized for more concrete at that point. Yes. And it might not be concrete. It might be something else. We'll see. We might be trying our hand at something new. And hopefully that goes well. You're a damn good block layer too, aren't you, girl? <laughs> <laughs> you guys might not know that about me, but I also lay block. <laughs> Josh just lays pipe. <laughs> Thank you. 
Ready? One, two, three, go. Oh, are you even pulling? Uh, stop. Well, were you, when were you planning on telling me you stopped pulling? Oh, um, I should have told you. I, I gave a little tug. I knew it was caught. I'd let go. I didn't say anything. You just kept on pulling. Did we put shale in there, or did all that nonsense just fall in there? Yeah, that fell in there. We're gonna make that mistake twice. This thing's tough, man. The problem is, there's no ditch. You push it on down in there, and it's, and it's slammed in there tight. And pulling it out is just a bear. It was hard getting it in because we had Yeah, it was probably harder to get out. <laughs> Plus, I used 16 foot boards everywhere. So, leverage is not on my side. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, oh. Oh, this board leverage is, is on my side. <laughs> the 16 foot board. One, two, three. Oh! One, two, three, go. One, two, three. Oh. Right, are you ready? Two pieces. We have two pieces of forms left on the interior side. <laughs> They're very, very heavy. They're a bear. Yeah. I got it. Got it. Really hoping for the like celebratory crash right there. It just didn't happen. Didn't happen, did it? No. <laughs> See, why you gotta go make me look bad, Josh? Ah, uh, help it. This thing's like waterlogged. It's so heavy. Push up. The entire bottom half right there is soaking wet. It's like... <laughs> the inside's done. I found it a lot easier to use my pry bar to take all the two by fours off the plywood. Just pry them all off. It makes everything a lot lighter because the plywood is soaking wet and it's waterlogged and it's probably three to four times as heavy as it should be if you buy it from the store. So I felt that prying them all off and pulling them off made our lives a lot easier. Three, three toss. <laughs> Once he got all of the bracing off of this last exterior side, the entire wall form like pretty much just came off his lot. You want know the, the secret was? What? This is wide open. Oh, uh, okay. That's fine. The inside, you got that much space, it's all falling on top, bitch. You doesn't want to come out. It was so easy. Oh, you tell me. Thank goodness. I know, right? Finally, a win. <laughs> Well, I was pulling it off, no pun intended. I can't <laughs> doubt these guns, you know? It looks great, but we have a huge mess to clean up. It's a massive mess to clean up. That's going to be just as bad as pulling everything off. Yeah, but not as rewarding. Not nearly as rewarding, no. That no, probably will be rewarding once you get it all cleaned up. Probably only need two 
and I think that you are probably big enough to carry your own this year. Of course I am. This year's baby chicks are fully feathered out and more than ready to be put out on pasture. So we're gonna be taking them from in the brooder out into the chicken pasture. Josh is getting all of the front lawn mowed down so that the grass is not too tall for the babies. Ellie and I are gonna grab the chicken crates and we are going to get that chicken tractor <laughs> dragged out from its storage location. And hopefully that thing is holding up. It has been through a lot of seasons <laughs> and it is not in the best shape but we keep scabbing onto it and making it do and if we could get like one more season out of it i would feel pretty good about that she's got an age on her she needs some repairs <laughs> yeah a little more feet than I remember. Me too. <laughs> it's not safe the way it is. We got a, a few screws, you know, a little chicken wire. We'll be in the clear. Not coming far yet. We're good. I'll go outside with us, okay? Yeah. We need some food too. Yep. We probably need to get the bigger feeders out of the barn. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Take your time and just get a good grab on them. So I know that this little chicken tractor is in pretty bad shape and it looks pretty ratty, but... It's been used and abused, guys. That just shows you that you don't need anything special to raise chickens in a chicken tractor. This yeah. thing was put together really nice years back. Yeah. With years and years of use and abuse, and it still works. You're gonna do a little patching here and there. And that looks brand new. <laughs> what did it cost you to build this thing? A tarp. <laughs> and it was just so inexpensive to build yes. originally and quick to build. I mean, I think that most of this was reused wood and, and chicken wire that we had extra laying around yep. an old tarp that originally didn't have holes in it. But on the other one, we used some uh, leftover metal roofing and we put it on there and then we could just make little repairs to it mm -hmm. each season yeah. and it kept functioning for us. And then we use this actually to raise our meat chickens. But for right now, it's just going to be that transition point for these baby chicks while they get used to our full grown chickens yes. and everybody can get along and then we have like a nice transition period, but it just works so well and you don't have to buy anything crazy expensive. Although the expensive ones look really, really nice. <laughs> yeah, they're really nice. <laughs> one, maybe, maybe one day, we'll see. Maybe one day. I'll get you that for Christmas next year, Josh. Thanks. I'll get you a vacuum cleaner for Christmas also. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> <laughs> Allie, you ready to put the chicks in? All right, come on. You're gonna love this. Yeah. Ooh, these white ones are so pretty, right? Look at the girls, okay. Oh, one's good. So, is cleaning up concrete forms more your style than decorating? I think I'd probably be out decorating to clean up concrete forms. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, you know? Uh, yeah. You're starting to have the same mannerisms as when we were decorating. <laughs> like, like, like a state of confusion, a little bit lost? Yes. <laughs> That's how I feel. <laughs>
So we are getting ready to head out today and since we are going to be gone for the entire day, we figured that it would be a good idea to go ahead and pack up all of our snacks and drinks to keep all of the kids and Josh <laughs> taken care of for the entire day. EcoFlow sent us our glacier. It is the first ever three-in-one portable fridge and freezer with an integrated ice maker. It features dual zones, so this actually triples as a freezer, a refrigerator, and an ice maker. The powerful 120 watt compressor works so that you can have solid ice cubes in only 12 minutes. It features a super fast cooling speed and a large capacity, 38 liters large to be exact, which means that we can fit everything we need for our entire family of five. Everything from our fruits and our veggies to even 60 cans of soda. It's gonna be a good, some good snacks. You know what I think? What? I think that this is going to be the perfect seat for us to use while we have lunch today at the cafe. Yep. <laughs> but my favorite food in here is the delicious jelly sandwiches. Mmm, so yummy. Of course. <laughs> so that means if you're off-roading in the desert or maybe you're out camping and want to grill up, I don't know, 38 liters of steaks, you will have plenty of room to get you through the day. But for us, we're actually going to be keeping this at our cafe from now on because we're spending so much time there. And when you have kids, you always need to have snacks on hand. So this is going to work perfect for that. We're gonna have it there and on any other jobs from here on out. Whenever we might need to have access to a refrigerator or a freezer or an ice maker on a repeated basis, this is going to be perfect for us. The powerful plug-in battery allows for cooling up to 40 hours wire-free and can even be used as a 100 watt power bank just by plugging into the side of the battery. So instead of trying to haul around three different devices like a refrigerator, a freezer, and an ice maker, outdoor enthusiasts can now just have one device to take with them which really just simplifies the entire process. It features the fastest sustainable direct solar recharging where you can actually fully recharge in 2.1 hours or you can pair it with the 298 watt hour plug-in battery. That way if you're off-grid in a car, in a boat, in a truck, in an RV, no matter where you are, you can stay fully recharged and keep all of your food cold. If you're interested in checking out EcoFlow's Glacier, click our link in the description below and use our code to get an extra $10 off on the Glacier, which is valid until June 15th. So we are back at the cafe today. We needed to drop by and handle some electrical work and we figured it would probably be a good time to update you guys on the major milestone progress that has happened here. And that is the drywall. I mean, look at that. It is completely done in here. For those of you who don't know, all of our weekly progress here at the cafe and also the other businesses and homes that we're renovating is all gonna be documented on our second channel, Josh and Aaron, The After Show. But we will be showing major milestone moments like this here on our channel just to keep you guys in the loop. This is originally a 100 year old building in Romney, West Virginia that we are renovating and opening a cafe in. So when we first became the owners of this storefront, it was extremely outdated. It had multiple layers of drop ceilings, old paneling over all of the walls, and it was definitely not the look that we were going for. So we completely gutted the interior, and that's probably the last time that you've seen this place. Since then, the drop ceilings were completely torn out, revealing the original rafters and planking. The walls were framed. All the plumbing's been roughed in. All of the exposed spiral ductwork has been completed. The walls have been insulated. The drywall has been finished, and a lot of the electrical rough-in has been completed, but not all of it, just a lot of it, and that's why we're here today. I brought Josh, my favorite electrician. I'm just a help, that's all. <laughs> You're the talent, Josh. <laughs> Already had these two two-inch pipes poked through the wall. The goal for today is to get these things chopped down, get two panels mounted up, and get everything wired on the outside coming on into these two panels. We need to get an inspection done so we can get power turned on. We have HVAC here, and uh, it's starting to get hot. It's starting to get a little muggy. It's middle of May. It's going to be 80 degrees today, and uh, we need AC going, especially for me while I'm working. So thankfully, EcoFlow sent me the Wave 2. It's a portable air conditioner. I'm very excited about that. It's going to keep me cool throughout the day. And I have EcoFlow's Glacier. It's a portable refrigerator and freezer to keep me snacked up throughout the day because today's gonna be a long haul. We gotta get it done. EcoFlow is about capturing energy, storing energy, and now using energy in smart and innovative ways. EcoFlow's newest addition to their lineup of smart devices aims to simplify everyday living with innovative solutions such as the Blade, an automated lawnmower with sweeper capabilities, and the Glacier, an all-in-one device that triples as a fridge, freezer, and industry's first integrated ice maker. And finally, the Wave 2, something that we could have really, really used back when we were living in the RV, 
but that is going to function for us perfectly today while we're still trying to get the HVAC on. The Wave 2 is the follow-up to the most powerful and compact AC and heater unit on the market. We are talking the fastest heating and cooling that's installation free and can fit anywhere. So think when you're out camping, you're in an RV, you're somewhere like this. The Wave 2 can drop to 18 degrees Fahrenheit in five minutes in cooling mode or raise 18 degrees Fahrenheit in five minutes on heating mode. It's extremely simple to use and fast charging whether you're at home or on the go. And for days like today when we know that we're gonna be working for a long period of time, we luckily have eight hours of runtime with the add-on battery. The Wave 2 can be charged in five ways, AC power, solar panels, power stations, cars, or the Wave 2 add-on battery. With the convenience of multiple charging options, you can enjoy comfortable, cool or warm air wherever and whenever you desire, at home or on the go. We have two 200 amp Cutler Hammer panels. We're gonna knock them out, mount both and drag it to the wall. We have wood behind the drywall and we're gonna screw everything together. And once that's done, we have some iron tail. Both panel boards are up. We're gonna come out of the top of the panel boards with three quarter inch pipe going up to the ceiling. And up there, we're gonna mount a trough. The pipes will go into the bottom of the trough and then we're gonna run MC throughout the entire building, going into the top of the trough and splicing everything up. We're going that route. We don't want MC going down the wall into the panel. It's gonna look kind of crappy. It's all exposed. And uh, MC can look bad if you uh, start slinging that thing around the ceiling, not doing anything nice, tight, and neat. Um, we're saving costs by doing MC versus piping everything in and uh, pulling wire. So we're going that route. So next step is pipe up and hit a trough. It's that time of year where you get those hot, sticky, like beginning of summer rains outside and then the thunderstorms in the afternoon. But it's kind of nice. It's like the universe has some sort of way of being like, okay, today you're not going to work outside. You're going to go to the cafe and get that job done. <laughs> so it works. We just got done drawing out the can and putting all the connectors in it. The next step we're gonna do is take pipe up to a trough. And when I say it again, the reason why we're piping it up is so we don't have MC coming down the walls because MC will look bad coming down the walls. We'll trough the entire thing, pipe it all in. MC goes into the trough, splices everything up, looks nice, neat, and pretty, and uh, that's how we're doing things here. Josh does all the work sort of thing. How do you got to go up here, girl? I'm starving. I'm sweating. I'm wasting away to nothing. Get down there lounging. <laughs> I took your air conditioner and your snacks now. You do realize it's supposed to be a job site? I'm supervising. <laughs> I think I'm doing my job pretty well. Oh, <laughs> man. Must be nice. <laughs> now I need a work truck. No, don't worry. I'm your chauffeur. Don't worry about that. I got that covered. <laughs> Perfect. If any of you are interested in checking out EcoFlow's Wave 2 or their Glacier, be sure to check out our link in the description box below. I'll be sure to leave our discount code down there for you to find. Now let's get back to the bill. She knows. <laughs> it's not your first day on the job. Yeah. All the panels are up. We're piped into the bottom of the trough. 
We have probably a day worth of pulling MC, getting everything coming down, spliced up, tying everything in. If you guys want to see all that stuff, it's going to be on the after show. But now we're going to head home and uh, we're getting back to work at home. we got a house to build. Today we're working on the back portion of the house, the back deck here. This all needs to get torn off because the next step in the entire house build is to get the floor joists up, get the subfloor down, and get this entire thing built out here. But in order to do that, all this needs to come off because the floor joists are actually going to come over here and tie into this portion of the house here. I'm actually excited to be tearing this off because I'm looking forward to seeing how everything held up because there's nothing under here is pressure treated. It's regular standard subfloor and some two buys right here. So. We'll see how it looks. So we're going to pull everything off, but now it's time to tie the old house into the new house demo time. I remember when we were doing all this blue skin. <laughs> it was the worst. Here we go. This is my very first learning experience about leverage. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> Pushing that in, leverage. <laughs> Back to your leverage one more time during this build. How's it look? That's good, girl. I mean, I think it, this could held up. That's a hot mess express under there, but you know, what do you expect? It's under a deck under a flat surface, but I think it held up. Oh, yeah. You did a good job installing that. <sighs> Yeah, a little bit tougher than I thought it was going to be, too. <laughs> As we tear the house apart, we see the layers beneath of what it took to get here. The forgotten but not lost memories of spreading blue skin across the wood in the summer heat. Hoping it would protect this house we were pouring our heart and soul into until one day we would be able to reach phase two of our home build. The addition that until just recently has always felt just out of our reach. Alright, so it's not safe to walk with us anymore. Just saying. This little back porch, carefully built with the intention of serving us in the now while being a doorway to our future build, held up exactly the way we hoped it would. And now as we see it go, piece by piece, we also revisit each piece that it took to get us here. I came to the realization I'm tearing the back side of this house down, so I brought in the big guns today. We're cutting this floor out. There it goes. A lot more fun this way. <laughs> you know? That's a wrap, girl. Now the house is unfinished. <laughs> this was a next step for us to keep on moving forward. Now it's down, steel plates, floor joists, Subfloor, we go up. 